fucking ride? Are you kidding me? Can there be such a thing on a spider? I don't think so. For that matter, I don't understand how you can think any ride on a motorcycle can be boring. If you thought that, for heaven's sakes, why would you be doing it? I got on my first motorcycle in 1965. Quite a story. It was a friend of mine from uh, Iowa. I was stationed at uh, Keesler Air Force Base in Mississippi. And my friend Dennis had a buddy of his, also from Iowa, that actually trucked his bike down and uh, that was the beginning of it for me. He was all excited about it and uh, I conned him into letting me take a spin on it to see if I liked it and, for heaven's sakes, if I could handle it. Well, it was the beginning of a long-term love affair with motorcycles. I can remember having that feeling way back when I was a kid when I'd see one go by. Something you just don't ever get over. Those of you that ride know what I mean. wonder what draws people into the sport. I know uh, with the American Motorcyclist magazine there's a lot of emphasis placed on competition, particularly in the uh, recent articles written in the American Motorcyclist magazine. And they talk a lot about the many forms of racing that are supported under the guise of the American Motorcyclist Association. Well, I've never been a racer. I've done some serious touring, but uh, never thought that the need to go very, very fast or climb over trees or hit the motocross track were something I necessarily wanted to do. Boy, I envy the guys who, who do that, who love it, and are really good at it. There's a lot of them that have been highlighted. The next most recent issue of the magazine spent a lot of time talking about uh, motorcyclists from the past. And several issues ago, there was uh, a good deal of time spent on talking about motorcyclist pioneers who were of the feminine persuasion. And uh, I guess my, my two favorites were the two gals who uh, rode an Indian Power Plus clear across the country way back in the early days of motorcycling. They didn't really have any roads to ride on that were any good, certainly no super highways. So they had to slog their way through the mud and crud. They actually got arrested at one point because uh, they were wearing men's clothing, which was kind of a no-no back then. And I guess the officers didn't quite know what to make of them. So he arrested them. I've been told that a major flick for anybody that likes motorcycles is a movie called On Any Sunday. It dates back to the early 70s, I believe, and I have to confess I've never seen it. But I understand that a lot of people took an interest in one of many forms of motorcycling after they saw that movie. It had some pretty good characters in it. Uh, Bruce Brown did a good job assembling a, a cast. Steve McQueen and uh, oh, Mert Lawwell, who was a big man in uh, racing on the Harley Davidson team back in the day. And, uh, wow, I just kind of quiver when I think about those wonderful pioneers in motorcycling in every form. I often wonder what draws other people into the sport. I can remember a couple of things back in my youth and younger days. 
I remember taking a trip, family trip, uh, from my home in Syracuse to uh, a family gathering in Connecticut. And, uh, it was. It had gotten dark. <laughs> uh, I saw a couple of motorcycles pulled into a gas station. It's kind of all over, over them with my eyes. And another time when we were just cruising around, I think it was somewhere around Shelton, Connecticut, and a guy went by, an older fellow on a Harley. He looked like he was almost as old as the bike, maybe older, definitely older. I had a toy motorcycle when I was a kid, and I think my parents noticed it was a special favorite of mine. It was a green plastic thing, it was probably eight or nine inches long, and it had a, a blue motorcycle cop on it. I know my folks were never big fans of motorcycles. One of the arguments they gave was, was about when uh, T.E. Lawrence was killed on a motorcycle. Oh yeah, so right, sure, everybody that gets on a motorcycle is going to die. And there's some conspiracy theories that that, was, uh, that accident is actually more than, than, than just an accident. But that's another story. Somebody came, back, came out in the 30s. Here it was in the 50s and 60s, and still very much uh, ready to, to take a ride. And I finally got to do it. Turn 25, I knew that insurance rates were going to be a little bit less. And uh, I actually had to borrow money. It was on my first real job after I got out of the service. And uh, I had to take a small loan, well, maybe like $500 or so. And it was kind of cool because at the time I hadn't established credit and I was not able to get a credit card because of that, even though I worked for the bank. Well, Lo and behold, I paid it off early, applied for the credit card, and then I got it. Good news, bad news, who knows? Credit's a good thing, I guess. Hey, buddy. And uh, it was a 1970 Yamaha DS6B. If I can find a picture of it, I'll, uh, I'll post it sometime. It's... I don't think I actually took a picture of my own, but I think I have a picture tucked away somewhere of a bike that looks just like it. Had uh, chrome fenders and a red tank, 250C, C, two-stroke, and I put about, I think about 4,000 miles on it that first year, and then I traded up for something I really wanted, which was a 1971 BMW R60-5, big step up from a Yamaha 250. Had a lot of fun with that bike. Rode it all over the place, from New York to Alabama, and New York to Wisconsin, and then uh, uh, up across the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and down through Michigan, and then back down to, uh, uh, oh, well, anyway. I ran into a hell of a rainstorm in Ohio, and, uh, <laughs> It was uh, uh, a case of I didn't know whether I was going to run out of gas, drown, or die of starvation first. But I found, finally found a place that was, that was open. And I was the only person in the restaurant. It must have been like the middle of the afternoon. And I had a great pork chop dinner for about $2.50. And I had three waitresses. I guess they wanted to have some kind of business during their shift. But anyway... The placemat was a map of the local area, and it showed me I was only about 20 miles south of uh, I-90, also known in New York as the New York State Thruway, one of the early interstates. Well, I got on it. I ran out of the rain and uh, got in at home after dark, put the bike away. Of course, it was filthy and cruddy from all the splatters rain and mud and whatever I'd run into and then I did what I usually did at the time was I slept out on the porch. It was warm enough to do that. And somewhere in the middle of the night I heard the pitter patter of the rain starting. And all I could think of was, wow, this was the end of a great ride and I beat the old rainstorm. 
tough luck, Rain. I'm tougher than you are. Well, maybe not tougher, but I'm certainly faster. Well, anyway, I enjoy my rides. I always will. I'll ride as long as I can. I know that the day will come when I can't do it anymore. We all face that, let's face it. But anyway, I'm having a good time and enjoying the good life. And uh, this road is not exactly a great road, but uh, I'm out, I'm on three wheels and loving it. So in the meantime, have a great ride, ride safe. Speak to Johnny out. <laughs>